Welcome back, everyone, to the Fox 61 Morning News. We are following breaking news, a massive fire in New Hartford this morning. Yes, Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc out there on the scene telling us more than 100 firefighters there trying to work together. Julia, where are we at since the last time we checked in with you? Well, good morning to you, Keith and Margo. I want to bring you to the guy who knows everything about that question just, you just asked. This is John Barbagallo, the Litchfield County Fire Coordinator. Tell us what's happening right at this very moment. Well, right now we're uh, still in defensive operations. Um, we are starting to send some crews in to do some, uh, you know, uh, overhaul and uh, some searching on the ground floors. Um, so we're going to be here for a while, however. And can you bring everybody back to when the fire came in? When did you guys find out about this? Who responded first? Yeah, at 2.26 a.m. this morning, uh, Litchfield County Dispatch received numerous 911 calls from tenants uh, reporting uh, the third floor roof area on fire. Uh, first arriving fire units did find heavy fire on the roof, and since then it, was, it did spread to all three floors of this building. So tell us about this building. We've got some residents and also some businesses on the bottom floor. Well, locally it's known as the New Hartford House, and it's been a fixture here in the center of New Hartford since 1850. And it's a mixed occupancy. There's about 14 residential apartments and about six businesses right along Route 44. What do we know about the folks that are inside? I know last time we spoke with you, you mentioned that we're searching the building, looking for all the residents. Any update there? Uh, no, at this point, no. Uh, you know, the local officials and the state police are still trying to do an accounting of all the tenants um, to find out if everyone was able to get out. And I can share, uh, since uh, we last chatted, uh, we have transported two firemen to local hospitals uh, for some minor injuries. Okay, and do you know of any residents who have been injured? Or? Um, at this point, no. I don't can you tell that. us about, like, how do they attack the fire at this point? It's on the defense mode. It was a three-alarm fire. Tell us about how the response works. Well, obviously, with it being the uh, tallest building here in New Hartford, uh, a lot of uh, tower ladder trucks were needed, master streams, lots of water. So they were pumping it from the Farmington River and out of the uh, hydrant system here in New Hartford, and basically just to try and salvage what they could from the building. And with a department like New Hartford that is pretty much all volunteer, except for you said one guy who's <laughs> pretty much a driver, what is that response like? Is it slow, and did they have help quickly? Well, thankfully, New Hartford uh, is a very good department, and they're just around the corner. So they were here very quickly, but they found very heavy fire conditions you know, on their first arrival. So there wasn't much that they could do initially to try and knock it down. And I know, you know, the initial assessment here is tough to tell, but what can you tell people just by looking at that building and your experience? You can see it's pretty much damaged on the complete top half of the building. Does it look like it's at all salvageable? Uh, again, I'm no expert, um, but I can share that the back side of this building, um, it's, you know, it's on a 90 degree corner here, um, and the back sec second and third floors have collapsed. So there is nothing beyond this uh, shell that you see here. All right, John, well, thank you so much for your time. We'll check back in with you for an update. Now, as John mentioned, they are searching the building, trying to see if there's anybody inside that they need to bring out and rescue at this point. At this point, they said, I'm told that, unfortunately, John, can you confirm there was a hamster who passed away? A hamster passed yes. away? Uh, that's news to me, but I will try and find out. This is what a neighbor told me, um, but we did see a betta fish that was being rescued. So lots of updates here, and we'll bring them to you live all morning on Fox 61 News. For now, we will send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, Julia, real quick, wanted to ask you, is there any indication at this point that the fire may have some criminal attachment to it, arson, anything like that, or is it too early here in the investigation to tell? Definitely too early, Margo, at this point. They're really on the defense mode. You see you can't see any flames any longer, but you see that smoke billowing over the top of the building. So it really is a defense effort, just trying to make sure that there are no more hot spots and that they can get all of those people out of the building safely at this point. So that's something they're going to have to be looking into probably for weeks to come because this is such a massive structure and it's historical. Also, as we know, built in the 1800s in the earshot this morning. Do you still see him? I'm sorry. Can you say that again, Keith? I is John still near you? Is he still in the area right there? Can we get, a get him for another question? He's... Yeah, sure. What question do you have? Okay, so curious. Uh, a primary concern this morning is the safety of all of these people who may have been inside. I wonder if you could have him walk us through how that process works and determining who, if anyone, is still w within that property this morning. 
All right, John, so the folks back in the studio, they're asking about the safety of the folks inside. Can you walk us through that process and, and the recovery efforts there? What happens there? Well, I've, I've talked to a few of the tenants uh, that, were, that made it out, um, and we were able to, between our regional rehab unit and uh, the Red Cross that are here, we're able to put some clothes on them, give them some slippers. Um, and right now, they're just, they're wondering themselves what the next step is. Um, obviously, the Red Cross is going to be huge in, in helping that and uh, doing some temporary housing. Um, but again, the priorities for the, the firemen here and the fire chief here is making sure everyone got out of the building. Okay. Any other questions, Keith and Margo, we can bring to you? Uh, certainly a fluid situation, Juliet. Nothing at this point, but jump right back on air as soon as you learn anything new.